Very good morning, everyone. I wish to thank all of you for uh, coming out this morning. This is one of the many press briefings that we are having across the Caribbean as we roll out the new strategic plan uh, for the university, which is really intended to restructure and to re-engineer our university uh, to make it much more relevant to the needs of the Caribbean in this 21st century. We are at the end of strategic plan 2012-2017. Uh, we are looking to the next five years. And we have given an assurance to the Caribbean people that we will, in fact, make this university far more relevant and far more aggressive in pursuing the objectives that are important to all of us at this time. Clearly, the question is, how is the university going to respond to the primary issue which is facing Caribbean peoples at the moment, which is this intractable economic recession? All of us are clear that the biggest challenge facing the region today is to drive our economies out of recession. If we do not do this, all of the benefits that we have achieved in recent decades will be lost, not only in the area of public health and education, but generally speaking, the social policies of this region. And so the top priority, the number one priority for this university is working in close alignment uh, with the producers and generators of wealth in the Caribbean to attain the economic growth that has proven to be so elusive. We are aware that there are reasons uh, behind this sluggish growth. Our Caribbean world, our Caribbean economies, are proven to be the most sluggish in terms of the recovery from this economic recession. And we believe that the solution to this challenge do in fact resides within the capability of the university sector. We think we have a critical role to play in this process. And so our strategic plan 2017-2022, which will be rolled out across the Caribbean in the next three to four months, will focus precisely not only on the alignment of the University of the West Indies to the issue of wealth creation and wealth generation, but also the entire higher education sector. This is undoubtedly the age of innovation. This is the moment of innovation. This is the moment when all of our entrepreneurial classes across the region will be pursuing economic competitiveness through the mobilization of research in order to drive innovation. In other words, this is the moment of the university. This is the time for the university. This is the time for us to step up and to provide leadership in this regard. And so a critical part of the university's strategic agenda in the next five years will be this issue of alignment of the university's enormous capability with the private sector of the region. And so we have created a new portfolio for one of our pro vice chancellors. Pro vice chancellor Denzel Williams will now be in charge of industry academic partnerships the process of driving industry academic partnerships is important. We are hoping that by the end of this cycle, all of our campuses will have technology parks where industry and academia can work together to create incubators to identify new products that will participate in diversifying our economies. This is critical to the process that we are engaging. We have also created a Pro Vice Chancellor for Global Affairs because we believe that agility in the international field, attaining international agility and competitiveness is also critical to our strategic plan and to the region. And so we are restructuring the University of the West Indies to place it directly in alignment with the best thinking that is available to generate economic growth through competitiveness and economic diversification. I had the opportunity to attend uh, the conversation last night here in Jamaica in respect of the Economic Growth Council. And while listening to that presentation that Jamaica uh, must and can achieve 
5% growth in the next four years. And listening to those presentations, I felt indeed empowered because I believe that the University of the West Indies can and must assist Jamaica as we will do all of our countries in achieving those objectives. There is, in fact, no sound economic reason why Jamaica cannot achieve 5% growth in the next four years. There are social constraints. It is for us to assist the stakeholders in Jamaica to identify those constraints and participate in removing them to allow this economy to grow. This applies also to Trinidad and Tobago, which is focusing on the issue of diversifying the economy away from the petrochemical base. This is, again, something which we can do. And we're hoping to develop a technology park at our St. Augustine campus to bring our investors and our researchers together to participate in finding solutions to economic diversification. In Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, the Bahamas, they are focusing on the refurbishment of the tourism industry. We have been involved in tourism research for the better part of 40 years. Again, we believe that we have a critical role to play in assisting that sector to find the competitiveness which is being pursued. And so, at this moment in time, we believe that the university has an even greater role to play than ever before. Simply because, as I have said, this is the age where industries can compete internationally only upon the basis of the mobilization of the finest research, the application of that research to innovation, and the search for a competitive edge through economic diversification. This is what a university can do. This is the role that we can play. And so, colleagues, we are inviting the stakeholders all across the Caribbean to participate in this conversation about not only the role of UWI, but the role of the higher education system in general, the importance of alignment, and the importance of the university being critical to the conversation about what is economic growth. We also believe that the issue of social justice is important. If you have economic growth without social justice, the process is undermined. If you assess the recent report by UNDP on the Caribbean, what they have said in their report is quite explicit. It is the fundamental inequalities of Caribbean economies. It is the fundamental inequalities of our economies and societies that is holding back our potential for economic transformation. And so our university will also participate in the question of confronting deep-seated historic inequalities in the Caribbean and address them. I was very pleased again last night to hear our most honorable Prime Minister Holness speaking about economic growth through the empowerment of the poor and the historically disenfranchised. And this is precisely correct. We have to assist the majority of our citizens to participate in economic life, not only as workers, but as investors, as owners, as entrepreneurs. This is the future. In most of the countries that have achieved economic growth uh, in this hemisphere in the last 30 years have done so on the basis of the expansion of small and medium enterprises. In other words, they have brought the, the working people, the middle classes, into the structure of the economy through fiscal and financial measures to allow them to grow, multiply, and proliferate economic activity. This is what we have to do in the Caribbean, and this is what the university can do. Our graduates can become the incubators of this culture of driving small and medium-sized enterprises to drive down unemployment and achieve economic growth. So this is our time. This is the moment of the university. And this is what we are promising our stakeholders that we will do. We will transform this university into a vehicle for economic growth. And so we are saying, education for economic growth, the university sector for economic growth. Now, we were fortunate that last week in Port of Spain at our St. Augustine campus, we were able to invite all of the international organizations, international donors, UNDP, the World Bank, the IMF, the European Union, 
Canadian Development Support Systems, all of the international donors and partners, multilateral partners, to come to our university to talk to us about this strategy. And we have won this support. They are in full agreement that this is precisely what the university sector must do. This is how we must align. And they have committed to working with UWI and the other universities and colleges in the Caribbean in order to participate in this conversation around economic growth. So we are taking this conversation step by step. We have already informed CARICOM that this is exactly what we are going to do and we have their support. And so we are looking at the reinvention of this university. This is the moment when we must demonstrate, we must illustrate and participate in the process of economic growth and expansion because for us in this university, this is the number one priority, getting our economies out of this recession and on the path to economic recovery. I thank you. I'm willing now to take uh, any questions on any aspect of university life, any aspect, social aspect, legal, political, cultural, I'm open to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Silence is not golden. Yes. Are you a member of the media? <laughs> uh, any questions from the media? Uh, please. Well, no, we are going to meet with the PWSC uh, tomorrow. Uh, we have a meeting with them tomorrow, and as you know, uh, this is um, a meeting that would be unprecedented, it would be historic. Uh, no campus has ever met with a PWAC before. We have 17 governments across the region, and the model which the governments and parliaments have all agreed to historically is that the university campuses and the universities uh, will report to their governments. Uh, we will report to the governments uh, eight times a year uh, through the line ministers. And our model of reporting and accounting at the moment is that we meet with the ministers of education and the ministers of finance, and we have these eight structured meetings per year. There are eight meetings per year where the campuses report to education ministers and finance ministers. And the finance minister of Jamaica, of course, is the chairman of the University Grants Committee, which is the body ultimately that approves all the budgets of the university. So at the moment, our chairman uh, of our finance committee is, is the minister of finance of Jamaica. And we report uh, to him annually. He approves our budget. So the model across the Caribbean is that the university reports to the governments. The governments report to their parliaments, but the university does not report over the head of the government to the parliament. We report to the governments, the governments report to the parliaments. So this is the first time in 68 years, in 68 years, this is the first time that the university will be having a conversation with it directly with their parliament in any country. So we are not going to report to the PwC because we have no legal jurisdiction to report to the PwC. But out of respect to the Parliament of Jamaica, we will go and explain this to the best we can. Well, the university has always been uh, aligning itself to economic growth over the years. For example, uh, one of the things that we did uh, some 20 years ago, we have established business schools on all of our campuses. The fact that we established business schools on all of our campuses was the first phase of demonstrating our commitment to the production of management, uh, entrepreneurship, and creating the skills and the environment to drive economic development. 
that process has really gone unnoticed, but that was really the first phase of UWI throwing considerable resources into the business of generating economic growth and development. Now, we are now entering a second stage of this. This is the second stage. This stage is associated, as I have said, with the mobilization of applied research to entrepreneurship. How are we going to create innovation concepts? And critically, how are we going to generate the important technical skills to drive the process of the digital revolution? And this is why we have established a relationship uh, with a university uh, in China, the Global Institute for Software Technology, so that we will be sending Caribbean students in the next two years uh, out to China to participate in software engineering, mobile applications, which is going to be an exciting area for young people to get involved in self-employment and drive the digital age. We have just admitted 50 students into the software engineering program. They will spend two years in UWA, Mona K. Phil, then they will go to China for year three and four, and while in China, will be inducted uh, into the technology park of China to acquire practical skills, which they will bring back to the Caribbean and drive young people's engagement in digital applications in the technology world. So not only on a sectoral basis, such as software engineering, but broadly speaking, moving our research into the entrepreneurial space to create the synergies necessary for new levels of economic activity. And this is where we are pushing the university as a top priority for us at this time. Yeah. It seems that you might have to ask all the questions, my dear girl. <laughs> so you can rack them up and roll them out. I can also add to you that the, one of the big issues in the region at the moment is about the financing of our university um, and whether the, the states of the region, the 17 governments, can in fact afford to fund this university at the level that we would wish. If you looked at the financing of our university, let's say 30 years ago, 30 years ago, this university was financed up to 80% of its operational budget by the governments. The governments gave us a clear remit that we must reduce, we must reduce this university's reliance upon the public purse. That remit was given to us by every government from Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad, reduce your dependence on us. The university has done a magnificent job in so doing. We were told to bring it down to less than 50%, to move it from 80 down to 50%, reduce your dependence on government expenditure. This campus at Mona has been excellent in this regard. It might surprise you to hear that at the moment, the government of Jamaica is funding less than 30% of the operational costs of the Mona campus. That might surprise you. The government of Jamaica is funding less than 30% of Mona's operational costs because the Mona campus leadership has responded to the call to wean itself off the government of Jamaica. And it has done a magnificent job and the Mona campus administration has to be celebrated. It would also surprise you to hear that the Mona campus has been most effective in this regard because at the moment, our campus in Barbados the government of Barbados is funding about 50% of the operational costs of the KFL campus. The government of Trinidad and Tobago is funding about 55% of the operational costs of St. Augustine. But in Jamaica, it is less than 30%. So the Mona campus has advanced that process most rapidly. It would also surprise you to hear that at the moment, the government of Jamaica is contributing less than 20% of the cost of the entire UWA. Now, this is excellent because we started here in Jamaica 68 years ago. 
We started here in Jamaica 68 years ago, and the Jamaican government and the people of Jamaica funded this, this university enormously for its first 50 years. And therefore, the government and people of Jamaica gave this university a magnificent start into the excellence that we have achieved. The government of Trinidad and Tobago has now taken up the slack. They are now the largest single contributor to the university's budget. So we are now celebrating the government of Trinidad and Tobago for taking up their share of this responsibility that Jamaica gave us this great start historically and now it's the time for, for Trinidad and Tobago uh, to take their share of this greater responsibility. And this is what a regional university is, where the greater share of the responsibility moves from country to country based upon the number of students and the state of their economy. And we do not therefore focus on moments in time. It's the long journey. And in the long journey of UWA, each country will have their chance to provide that greater leadership. So we celebrate countries as they move from one to two to three in terms of their share of the operational budget. And this is now the time of Trinidad and Tobago to carry the greater share. Read. <laughs> We can re repeat for you, sir. Healthcare, five fundamental truths. What is that? I'm not sure. Um, you have universities that are not built to serve themselves. Oh, yes. Um, we must be prepared to push our region forward. Um, the response to the Caribbean sluggish economic circumstance must be rekindled. It must be to rekindle the Caribbean revolutionary spirit. With these five, I just want you to emphasize beyond um, the bold points. Well, okay, but let us start with the first fundamental truth. It is that universities are not built to serve themselves. Fundamental truth. Universities that have survived the long span of time are built to serve their nations. In our case, all of the governments of the Caribbean came together to create a regional university. This university has to serve this region. Now. The importance of that service can be expressed in multiple fronts. One, the issue of economic growth and transformation. We must provide the skills, the environment, and the direction to enable us to understand where we are in our economic development. What is the nature of this moment? If you look at the economic development of the Caribbean economy in the last 400 years, okay, where you are today, for 300 years, we had a comparative global advantage in the exportation of raw materials, sugar, coffee, cotton, and so on, bauxite, oil. With that comparative advantage in the exportation of raw materials, the region economy grew. And it grew gradually through to the 1950s and 60s. Then that comparative advantage in the exportation of raw materials was lost. That's the challenges we had with the primary sector. In recognition of this, we restructured the Caribbean economy around services. And the tourism industry, finance, bank, and insurance, offshore capital mobilization, that sector became the engine of growth in our Caribbean economies. And we develop a comparative advantage, not only in relation to price, but in relation to quality. So we had a quality advantage with our tourism product, with our finance and banking. That gave us 40 years of growth. So the region's economy grew again. The sugar thing had declined, the raw materials had declined. We had a second boost with the financial sector, primarily tourism, banking, insurance. We got a boost. The quality advantage that we had there is now diminishing. And the reason why we are now in this sluggish circumstance, this doldrum, that though the recession globally is lifting, and most parts of the hemisphere are experiencing some growth, 2-3%, we are still at less than 1% on average. 
because we are not as competitive at the level of quality in our primary engines of growth. This is where we are at this time. So, where is the growth going to come from for the next spurt of the Caribbean economy? That spurt can only come from innovation that will drive economic diversification. We must diversify our economies. First of all, we must maintain the quality we had, improve upon it, but we must also find new products, diversification, and we need to drive entrepreneurship into new areas. Technology application, science. Application of technology and science to all industry, agriculture to manufacturing. We have to find that edge now. If that is true, and I believe it is, then this is precisely the moment for the university. Because we are the ones with the science. We are the ones that have access to the technology. We are the ones with the research. We are the ones who are in a position to cross over, engage with the entrepreneurial class, migrate our research, our science, our technology into that space to create that industry. Take, for example, the issue of renewable energy. Let us say that we are going to build industries around new renewable industry, uh, say foreign exchange, the fossil fuels, create a new sector. All of that technology and science exists in UWI. What we don't have is the capital, but we have the science, we have the technology, and we know how to innovate. We have it all here, but we don't have the capital. So we have to create these partnerships with those who have the capital, because we have the science, we have the technology, create an environment of partnership. That is how it has to be. And that applies to every sector. In agriculture, the same thing. We have the science, we have the technology, but we don't have the capital. In every sector that is required for economic transformation, the science, the technology, the research exists in our university. The challenge for us now is to create the partnership between the university and the investor class in order to drive the economies. So this is really the moment where the university sector in this region can rise and shine. This is our moment. And this is what we're seeking to do. So we're calling upon the entrepreneurial class. We're calling upon the state leaders also to recognize this fundamental truth and help us to create the environment where we can make these partnerships, build upon them, and normalize the context for economic growth and development. This is our time. Okay. Any other question? Well, if not, well, thank you very much. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.